like a thank you for playing, for ending a good beta. Let's get on with the review for Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Beta. Here we go. Hello everyone today and welcome to NV Gaming. I'm your host, NV, and today we are doing the final chapter of our Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Private Beta video series thing I was making. I'm just going to label it as a series. Alright, so let's begin. This is my reviews and thoughts on the Call of Duty Beta. Let's start off with my customization and loadouts. Let's begin. I'm creating on classes, specifically my loadouts. So, all of them are pretty much the same except for the weapons. So, let's start off with the gear. We have Stem Shot. Stem Short? No, it's Shot, my bad. Stem Shot. Heals faster and more often while maintaining control of your weapon. I personally really liked using the Stem Shot because it was much faster when it came to healing and using, which was nice. Of course, the other equipment you could use was the special weapon recharges faster, which means your special kind of weapon recharges faster, as well as your sh score shrieks has, has a discount for this one. This one allows you to have extra armor, and this one is you can hear enemies. Personally, I would strongly recommend you go with the stem shot because you definitely can tell that your like this and your ultimate is charging much faster, but with the healing, it's definitely kind of difficult. So I definitely recommend you run with the stem shot for a fast healing so you can always be on top of the action. The perks I went with was this one was headgear, detect enemies equipment, of kill streaks with with wall, rotations, happy body care packages. Hang on, let me take. The perks I went with was just mostly just simple stuff. Nothing crazy or anything like that. A lot of Call of Duty games, I wasn't really into like the whole perks and stuff. I just kept with like simple perks that could help me in battle. Like Scavenger. Scavenger is definitely helpful for picking up ammo. Retake. Just a retake. Guys, darn it. So for perks, I just kept it pretty simple and pretty basic. But, I would strongly recommend you go for a Scavenger. It really helps with ammo and stuff. And if you don't have that guy who deploys you extra ammo... Scavenger is very helpful for picking up ammo. Alright, now that we've covered my perks and gear I use, we'll now talk about the weapons. This is a ICR-7 rifle. I definitely loved using this. It was definitely definitely felt like I was using an, MK, an M27. I, for, I hope I'm pronouncing that. It's the rifle from Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I absolutely loved using that rifle. And this rifle definitely kind of reminded me of that weapon a lot, in a way. Of course, I didn't really get that far when it comes to all these weapons. But I really, really love using this. Perks, I have an optical sight. I have a reflex sight for all of my weapons. An additional quick draw for extra grip. Very useful with this weapon. And the the app rounds the app rounds which are which gives you a little bonus and damage which is nice yep these are the other ones moving on to the stirf the stirf then we have the revolver shotguns and rocket one for the stirf i just added a nice reflex sight just to help with aiming Moving on, now this loadout, I was going to have this weapon, right here, I was going to use this one. Now, this weapon right here really, really reminded me of that weapon I used in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in the campaign when they were in that floating city place and they needed to find Karma. And that small little weapon that they used with a nice little suppressor and stuff, it was... I just, I absolutely loved using that during the campaign mission. And this weapon really does remind me of that weapon. Unfortunately, I forget its name, but I absolutely loved that weapon. Mm -hmm. And of course, oh, almost forgot. And for this one, I just added an extended mag. But now, I'm adding a reflex sight, because I got some extra space to work with. 
And I just because I forgot to cover the other perks, round rounded. Interesting that a lot of them are kind of universal. Yep. Moving on. Custom slot 3. I normally always go with a machine gun for this one. It's just nice to sometimes use a machine gun to hold down forts. And it's nice. And areas. So this is the Titan. This is the only machine. This is the only um light machine gun you get to use during the beta. Reflex sight. I was thinking about changing it to that one. I haven't tried that one yet. And an extended barrel. Ooh. Change that, guys. I'm also adding in AP rounds also for extra damage. And now we have we now go to the rocket launcher. I do not know how to pronounce that. Without making it sound like a swear word. Anyway, for this one, no, you can't put optics on it, so I just add this mod right here, which adds rate of fire and accuracy, which is nice. Hmm. Alright, continuing on for category 4, this one I just used the MX9, reflex sight as always, and just rapid fire action for additional power. Next we have the MOG-12, and all I did was just add a stock for better stability. First, for loadout 5, I used a scout rifle, or a tactical rifle, as they would call it. For this one, reflex sight, well-rounded barrels, AP, actually AP rounds, and high caliber. For maximum damage efficiency. And this one just, you know, with a reflex sight. Just showing all the rest of the perks. There we go. Now for this one, I've been kind of been tinkering with sniper rifles and stuff. When it, when it came to this. Sniper rifles are definitely difficult. But, you use a sniper I'm rifle in combat. A. And you land a good shot, it is richly Barrier rewarding. Fired when you take down someone with a sniper rifle. So, I was tinkering around with this one, and you're not gonna believe this, but they have like a simple like, trichol sight, or trimic, trim, trimic sight, I forget, I know you have no idea how to say that. This thing is just turns into a simple like, little iron sight, and it was kinda fun to use. But I'm gonna stick with this one. Stick with a nice light thing and high caliber rounds as always. Extra damage. And then after that, I swap to a normal pistol with an extended mag for extra help. It actually really works a lot. It's really helpful. Instead of like a shotgun. Alright, now let's move on to the kill streaks. Or score streaks. I always keep thinking kill streaks. Alright, so for score streaks, I always go for just a light amount of them. Didn't really get that many, but a lot of these were, but I did see a lot of them. For instance, with this one, this game, and look at that. This thing just comes rolling in, like it's nothing. Losing Bravo. And then it comes back again. So that's definitely a crazy kill streak right there. Then these soldiers came in, a strike team. They're okay, I would say. They're definitely not like a difficult to take down, but they would definitely give you like a challenge to take down. Not difficult, but a challenge. I never saw the gunship. I did see this turn down in battle. A lot of people use the little mantis machine. A lot of people use this chopper. That chopper was definitely an annoyance. I never, I did not see a lightning strike. The Hellstorm missile was definitely an annoyance. The counter UAV did not see. Um, the care package. That was also not really used that much, but you can definitely see that it was brought in the old fashioned way, which was nice. Now onto the specialists. I did tinker a lot with a lot of these. This one right for the Ajax one, actually definitely fun, his flash grenade which is that, it is a flash grenade. But also I wanted to show you guys this. They also have videos for the specialists and it shows off their abilities. 
And as you can see, he uses a pistol thing in the hole. I also like that the hole also has a little face, which is awesome. My suggestion for him would be always use the gun in with the shield. It works a lot. You got like 100 rounds, or my bad, 120 rounds, and it's just amazing to work with. Moving on to his grenade. This thing was awesome to use. It was like a, it was a flashbang. And the more you hold it down, the charge it has with flashes. And it's definitely useful. I cannot tell you how many times it saved me in call in matches. Just absolutely a lightsaber. Lightsaber. But yeah, he was definitely fun to use and interesting. Moving on with Barita. Again, there's like videos and stuff. Hers is like multi-explosive grenade. And a grenade launcher. I really didn't use her that much. I only used her once. The grenade works amazing, but the grenade launcher was difficult to control and use. Next we have Cash. Cash is definitely that lightsaber slash support saver. De they definitely made a huge change from him when they showed him for the first time. Instead of him... Like, for instance, this is his assault pack gives you additional ammo. I have shown that countless times. It's actually really helpful and useful. Advice, put that in the spawn area. When you spawn in, just drop it down, and then all your teammates can have ammo. But here's the crazy thing. He, uses, he now uses this tablet, which instantly gives all of his teammates a boost. This is great for those game modes in which you, your teammates have lives, which is absolutely critical and useful for the final push. Yeah. But as you can see right there, he uses like a little gun thing with a monitor on it to give people health. So I really like the change they did, they made with him. Moving on, we have Firebreaker. Um, I used him a little bit, but I really don't really like to use him. For starters, his, his, his little core thing he uses, if you charge it up even worse to critical mass, you start taking damage. It is not really a useful thing to help you, especially if you're against people. But it's great for like your hiding, like they show in that video. He's just right there, they don't see him, and they all take damage. His pyro weapon is actually pretty good. Has the same long range, and it's definitely just like from Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Definitely useful. Next one, we have Nomad. First of all, his trap mine. That thing is really useful, but, but you gotta do it like that. You can't just do it on a long distance. You really gotta put it in some short distance. It helps a lot, especially with traps and crowd control, especially if you're using like a sniper rifle. It helps a lot. So that way you're like up the stairs, you got a good window, you're sniping, a person's in your building, they're starting to get up the stairs, they walk past the trap, boom, they're dead. And then he has the canine unit. The canine unit is, Okay, I would say. Difficult to take down. Trust me. Very difficult to take down. But it will score you like a kill or... A kill or two or three. Very, very nice to have. Also, the canine unit only attacks. It does not, like, provide healing services or anything. Next time we have... Faltinet? Faltinet? Um, so basically... This sniper rifle was very difficult to use, but it's definitely amazing. I only, I mostly use the sniper rifle just to take down enemies and stuff at a distance. And it was nice, then my teammate just went in and finished the job. But his seeker mine, that thing is awesome. It, it, stuns a, it stuns an enemy, so you can go in, finish the job. It's absolutely amazing, and it's also great for seeking out enemies, which is also nice. Next, we have Recon. Recon is great for new players. With his Recon Dart, which allows you to scout in an area on the map. So that way you always know what's going on in that sector, which is very useful. As well as his Vision Sight thing, which allows you to see all the enemies beyond walls and stuff. Which is absolutely useful and helpful. That's why I would say Recon is great for new players. Next we have Runt. Um, he has a grapple gun, pretty simple, just travels beyond. 
And then we have a slam ability for impact. I recommend you use a slam for when an enemy is like really close to you and you have no idea where they're at. So just slam it and boom, you get yourself a kill. Next we have Sabara. Tactical deploy is absolutely amazing. You deploy, you drop that down and when you die, you can just respawn right there. It's great for your teammates and it's super helpful. Especially for crowd control and securing a point. Her ability, her super is that pistol, basically one hit KO, pretty devastating on the battlefield. Then we have my favorite person, the Torgura. And I gotta say, his stuff is amazing. Barbed wire is great, if a person walks through it, they take damage, and it's just absolutely great for when you got an enemy coming up the stairs, they walk past the barbed wire, it slows them down, you, can, you rush down. And you actually get a notice when someone's passing through it, like little tick marks on your screen, like a hit marker. And so you can just go down, deal with the problem, go back up, and go back to business. And then you have his barricade, and that thing is awesome! Not only do you have a great line of cover, but also you gotta make sure to do that squat, that squat thing I taught you in the last video. But also that thing has a microwave thing which disorients people, which is very useful and helpful. And that's it for all the specialists to help you guys out and getting to know the specialists and the score streaks. Now it is time for me to talk about the positives and negatives of Call of Duty, Black Ops 4 Beta, and what they can do to improve the game. Let's start off with the positives. So the positives for this would be definitely the gameplay is definitely is definitely fun and entertaining. The health system is definitely a little bit of a challenge, but it's definitely rewarding for when you take someone down and you survive a, a battle with someone. I always found that very interesting. I also like that they kept with Call of Duty Black Ops 3, in which as you level up, you get access to weapons, but also as you use the weapon more, you level up the weapon and you get access to their attachments. And I definitely love that. So that means a player can get access and they can practice more. And that's absolutely awesome. Okay, now let's get into... The negative stuff. Let's start with like these two missions here. Hardpoint and domination as both of them as like rotating things. I really didn't find that kind of fun because it was like you got either you play hardpoint or domination. It, both of them focus on controlling a zone, but it's like it's like different roles you need to play in the game mode. Same with this one. Kill confirm and team deathmatch. I really don't like the whole kill confirm because after you take someone down, you need to go collect their tags. I just, you gotta kind of make it separate, like if you look at control, it's just control. Search and destroy, search and destroy. Heist, just heist. So I strongly recommend that you add like, keep them separate. But I can understand why they did this just for my, just for space and to make it easier. Moving on. When I hit level 5 in Call of Duty Black Ops, no hang on. When I hit level 5, I automatically got access to... We're winning this. As you can see right there, I got access to all of this. Creative class, if you notice that there when you hit level 5. I really didn't like that, hey, once you hit level 5, you get access to creative class and stuff. If they are going to keep this feature, make sure they do like a message saying, once you enter multiplayer, say, Hello, welcome to Call of Duty multiplayer. Please read this very carefully or like they put in big text once when you hit level 5 you get to create a class you get to create classes that sort of thing just to address the player i know they probably have already put it in somewhere addressing it but they kind of need to do it once you enter or something or maybe i just missed it let me know in the comments down below if i missed it and finally let's talk about the combat the combat in this game was actually pretty good it kept it kept going kept keeping good they made it felt like every battle was like a one-on-one -on -one match, you know, like hey, whoever wins you get to heal yourself And then you're ready for the next match. It kind of kept it just one-on-one -on -one. But there's the problem. It's just like a one-on-one -on -one match. If there's like two people You're going to lose. It was and it's very difficult to take down two people because your health's already low And then you already took down one of them, but the other one could win That's what really makes this difficult but there is a way to improve this. Increase, either make like damage 
decrease damage a bit or increase health by an extra 50. Like everything, all the pros and cons about Call of Duty Beta. Let's head over and let's check out some clips I captured. This is me using Hunter pre-made loadout. And... This was in the beginning of the game mode. I was just swimming around. Staying sharp. And... Boom. Tomahawk kill. That was my first Tomahawk kill in the beta. Helicopter. Helicopter just left. This is me right here on a good sniping perch. Just great. I got a good visual view. Enemy UAV available. This is when I use the ability, and I just saw them all. And watch, I just dominated. This is why the Not recon touched. is great for new players. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video on the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 beta review. I would really like to know you guys' thoughts on did you guys enjoy the beta and did you guys have a fun playing the beta? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to stay tuned this Wednesday. We have a very special NV update video for you guys, so stay tuned to that. That's all, guys. This is NV Gaming signing off.